Hi and welcome back to Scale Model Shed and in this video I'm going to be building Airfix's new 148 de Havilland Vampire. The kit includes three schemes for the 601 Auxiliary Air Force, the Canadian Air Force and the Norwegian Air Force. The instruction booklet is made up of simply laid out CAD illustrations. So here we go, brand new Airfix kit, really good interesting subject and I'm going to keep the weathering pretty clean on this model. Hope you enjoy the build, here we go. So to start off the instructions have you drilling all the necessary holes in the lower wings. The air intake trunking is glued to what acts as the centre wing spar and part of the inner wheel well. The lower wing is moulded quite flat and the angle is set using this centre spar. I use Tamiya's quick setting cement so I can hold it in position while it sets. The exhaust assembly is primed in black then glued in position on the lower wing. Now onto the cockpit and once the very few simple parts are assembled the whole assembly is primed in black. And this includes the seat with the moulded in seat belt as I'm not going to be adding a pilot. To create some simple texture onto the seat pad, I stipple flat earth onto the NATO brown. I then give all the cockpit parts a coat of satin varnish and then create some depth to the seat belts using a dark panel line wash. Microsol is applied to the instrument decal to conform it to the dials on the control panel. Some simple wear is applied to the cockpit rear bulkhead using a sponge and Vallejo's metal colour aluminium. The cockpit is then glued into position on the lower fuselage. The seam on the top and the bottom of the rear boom is carefully scraped away with a scalpel blade. Before being carefully sanded back with a 1000 sanding block. The booms can then be glued into position. It may be an idea at this point to check that you've got the boom the right way round. The clue is the slot for the horizontal stabiliser. Do you reckon I should edit that bit out? On the top half of the fuselage I paint the inside of the cockpit black and then the two parts are mated together. It's worth noting here that I did lightly scrape away the primer from the surfaces to be glued. Masking tape is used here to tightly keep the two halves of the fuselage together while the glue sets overnight. And whilst the glue is still soft, I test fit the nose section. And then the wing halves are glued together which did require a fair bit of clamping. 
I found there to be a slight step here along the join line. This was eased back using a scalpel blade. And any gaps were filled using putty and then sanded. In order to increase the level of detail on this fairly simple kit, I decided to add some rivets to the outer panels. And after printing off some simple blueprints of the vampire, I marked the panel lines onto the model with a pencil. This is a 0.65mm double wheeled rosy riveter. This is a fantastic little tool but pretty difficult to get hold of here in the UK. And in fact at the moment they're impossible to get hold of because this one I had posted from Australia and I've got single wheeled versions in 148 and 132 being posted from America. And I'm sure this task really required the single wheeled version but for now the double will just have to do. The fuselage on the Vampire was primarily made of plywood. As a result the vast majority of these rivets were applied to the wings and around the engine covers. The air intakes required a little bit of pressure to keep them in position. However they do have a large surface area to glue to so this didn't cause too much of a problem. Okay so on to nose weight and this was quite an interesting one to try and sort out. The kit recommends 17 grams of weight in the nose section. So I did a quick test with 12 grams worth of fishing weights. And this just about brought the nose down okay. So I decided to go with 14 grams to be safe. But that's a lot of weight to get into a very small nose section most of which is taken up by the front wheel well. So for this task I turned to tungsten putty which is essentially a really heavy plasticine used for fishing. And the great thing is is that it can be moulded and compressed into every square millimetre available. So that's 14 grams and that seems to work pretty well. So now the model's ready for priming and I prime it in Mr. Surfacer 1500 black. And now gazing at this sea of black you can notice what a difference those extra rivet details make. So now I move straight to spraying on AK Extreme Metals polished aluminium. And I concentrate on all the difficult to paint areas first.
To ensure these de Havilland trademark no step decals lay down onto the model properly, I'm going to apply a fairly thin down gloss varnish first. The decals are then applied using Microset to ensure good adhesion to the model and Microsol to help the decal conform to any irregular surface. For stubborn decals that require something more than Microsol, I use Ultimate Decal Setting Solution Strong. So after the decals have been applied, I give them 24 hours to dry. I then take a 2000 grade foam back polishing pad and gently remove the shine off the surface of the decals. This will clean up anything on the surface and provide a good key for the forthcoming varnish layer. I then make the decision between a flat or a semi-gloss final varnish layer and decide to go with semi-gloss thinking it will probably better replicate the real aircraft's aluminium. The next day it's completely dry, no more spraying is necessary so the cockpit masking can be removed. I then make up canopy masks by tracing round the framework with a sharp pencil. Once masked, the canopies are first primed in black and then painted in polished aluminium. Here, Airfix felt the need to put an ejector pin right in the middle of the gun sight glass. This is carefully removed with side cutters and then cleaned up with a hobby knife blade. So now on to weathering and the first thing I wanted to do was take all the shine off the top and bottom engine covers. And instead of simply spraying it with a matte varnish I decided to create a different effect using a neutral grey oil. This was mixed with Up Tai Lung's Matte Effect Thinner to create a thin wash. 
I then stippled this wash lightly over the upper and lower surfaces of the fuselage. I then toned down the effect as necessary with a dry cotton bud. I also used this oil wash to tone down the decals, quite easily giving them a slightly more faded appearance. Mechanical areas like the landing gear and the flaps were detailed using a brown wash. So it's obvious here that during operation these aircraft did get quite dirty. Now I don't want to go quite that far with this model but I do want to replicate some grime and leaking around the engine covers. So I start off with engine grease oils applied dry and blended with a dry brush. Oil streaks are obtained using a brush very lightly moistened in white spirit. Smoke and engine grease oils are then heavily thinned with a mat effect thinner. Once nearly dry these are then stippled to create the effect with a dry brush. I apply some AK Warn effects straight on top of the extreme metal paint on the front nose wheel cover before painting with a gloss red. The chipping fluid below is activated using some water before carefully chipping it using a wooden pick.
After fitting the drop tanks with some super glue, it's worth checking that they're square with the wing. Here I do a quick experiment with the wingtip navigation light by drilling a 0.8mm hole in the inside face. Then filling the hole with an XF25 clear green to give the impression of a small green bulb. And finally, I add a few remove before flight tags around the landing gear and this sees the model finished. So that's it, and this new Airfix tool builds into a nice little model with a few nice features. And I've also kept it quite simple with minimal weathering. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more of my future builds and you haven't already, it'd be great if you subscribe to the channel. So that's it guys, thanks for watching, have a good Christmas and happy modelling.